Hey, 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 everybody. This is Captain Yeet. And for you, for another Kurobachimon chapter review, this is going to be Kurobachimon chapter 49, titled Deadlock. So, let's get into it. So, the beginning of the chapter starts off right where we left off with Chihiro and Hirohiku facing off against each other. Now, Chihiro asks him, what are you trying to do? Hirohiku goes, what do you mean? I'm here to kill Yoya and take his eternal contract away, so we're able to use his sword. And then he looks over to the side, he goes, oh... You mean that? And it shows a panel of all of the guys that killed. Um, I forgot their names, but it was like the Steam Squad or whatever. The guys that were protecting Yoya in the hot springs for the past couple years. He killed them and just laid their bodies up on a couch just like they're sitting down regularly. He goes, well, I mean, come on. I'm pretty sure Yoya over there wanted to say a proper goodbye. And hey, they were pretty strong, though. I mean, hey, that's something to be proud of. They even killed all the grunts that we sent over there with the little uh, dashiki thingies. That's that little, like, tool that the Hishaku made that can give you the power of an enchanted blade, but it tears apart your body and kills you really sort of after. He, they were able to kill a whole group of those guys. So they're pretty strong. They shouldn't be anything to snuff at. Probably Chihiro not trying to hear any of this. He just killed those guys and just laying their bodies up. Chihiro also mentions in the same panel that he has the flame mark of the Hishaku, like top guys, but he wasn't there when he killed his dad. Anyway, after that, while they're talking, some random like grunt guy in the Hishaku busts through the window, tries to kill Yoyai. He's instantly on that. Boom, instantly slices him right in half. And then he looks at Chihiro, he goes, Chihiro, focus, we have a job to do. Chihiro goes, of course, my job right now is to protect Yoyai so he gets to work. Chihiro activates Nishiki, and when he activates it, he specifically says Nishiki ultra high speed. And I can't remember if you ever said that before, so either this is just the same thing, but just, you know, stronger and faster, or this is like a whole new thing. I mean, he, he's doing the regular thing when he just moves really fast, so it's probably just, you know, a faster version. But he starts to do that, and he runs over to a guy. And then, hi, I just forgot his name. The guy that he's finna fight. The guy the guy that killed everybody. I, I just said his name at the beginning of the chapter. It was um Hiro Roka. Hiro. I'm gonna just call him Hiro. Um Hiro, he does a technique called Blood Crane. He pulls out a piece of paper and it's like it's kinda looks cool. It's like uh, it's like Gambi when he pulls out all his cards like this. He's really cool. He does that. He does a move called Blood Crane and he makes a bunch of paper cranes and throws them at Shahido. And I was like, oh that really surprised me because last chapter I thought he was using glass because we saw like the glass windows break when he was walking in on the train and stuff. So I was thinking, oh, okay, he can use like glass and that would be pretty bad because there's glass everywhere on a train station. But no, he uses paper origami cranes and other animals. That's pretty cool too. So it was, I was really struggling last week because I was thinking there's not really a lot of glass users in anime. So I didn't know who to put in the thumbnail to represent him. And I don't really know any, like I don't really, at the top of my head, I don't really remember any, a lot of, paper origami users in anime either so i really don't know who to put in instead but he kind of looks like monoma from my heroes so i might just put him to represent him not really and they don't have the same powers but they look kind of similar so i'm gonna just put him in there to represent him unless i find somebody else so i haven't made a thumbnail yet so unless i find somebody else then i guess i'll see anyway Chihiro activate nishiki like i said he runs up to one random grunt soldier boom instantly slices him in the head and then the paper crane comes out of nowhere, goes right through the guy and the Chihiro just cut. So it's strong enough to just bust right through a human body. When it does that, a bunch of blood splats right in Chihiro's face and he's a blinded for a few seconds. And then well, Hiro, he takes the opportunity to jump up, grab the sword of the guy Chihiro just cut as a downward blast. Obviously that blood didn't really blind him, so Chihiro's instantly able to counter that and block it. But uh, um, what do I call him? He, uh, Hiro, he points that way and Shahido looks and the rest of the paper cranes that didn't get cut in that attack, they hit Yoyai right in the back. And then he's like, oh no. And he goes, yeah, come on, man. Pay attention. Like, you know, you got these things right past you. What kind of protector are you? After that, I like this scene. This is really cool. Shahido yells out to Hakuri. He goes, Hakuri, centipede. And then we get a flashback panel of the centipede move. So centipede was a move that Hakuri's dad used when he was using the Sunichi. Is when he opened up the sword, not the Sunichi, it's a tiny bit, and a uh, centipede like popped up like an illustration. And when he closed it, it caused a huge shockwave to blow him and Akame back. 
So he goes, oh, I know what that means. So he grabs Yoyai Hakuri and pulls him down to the ground. So he jumps up and does Kuro and does a spiral flash around the whole train. So it takes out everybody. But um, I keep forgetting what to call I'm going to call him Origami. I keep forgetting his name. Every time I go back to him. It, it, so the only person that's really left on the train is Origami. <laughs> the only person left. I was like, I said his name perfectly at the beginning of the chapter when I completely forgot it. I'm going to need to get used to saying it a lot more than just one time so I can understand it. Anyway, obviously, um, that, that was a pretty cool move. I really liked that. But obviously, Origami, he was able to dodge that pretty easily. And Hakuri and uh, Yoya, they're okay. They were able to get down low enough so I didn't cut them. But then Yoya starts to think about, you know, that he's Haku or the guys that killed him. This is Roku Haru's son trying to protect me. And it's kind of hard to protect me on such a cramped space on the train and protect me and the fighter guy that's pretty strong. And he's trying to think about all this different stuff about how he died, the people protecting him died, Chihiro's trying to protect him. So he yells at him, he goes, Chihiro, you got this. Don't worry about me, I'm going to be okay. Chihiro goes, okay. He grabs Origami guy and just busts through the side of the train and they're falling outside the train. <laughs> and I was like, What? Number one, I kind of forgot the train was moving. I thought the train was still... Because last chapter, the train got to the next station and it stopped. And then the guys, like all these Haku guys, walked on. I didn't know the train started moving again. I thought it was still like station. So when we get this panel of them busting up the side of the train, and it's like, you know, over some city and like it's moving. So I'm like, oh, snap. They're moving. I thought they were still on the train station. That kind of surprised me. Number two... I was thinking the same thing Shahido and Origami was thinking. Like, oh, Origami goes, wow, you're really going to, like, really going to leave him by yourself? I mean, leave Yoya by himself? Shahido starts thinking to himself that, obviously, it's, this isn't the ideal thing he wanted to do, leave him by himself. He's supposed to protect him, especially since Hakuri's powers aren't, not, I want to say, like, back online, like, he lost them, but he's not fully recovered from his injury, so he can't really use his powers, not even the sock waves. So... I mean, Yoga can defend himself, but, you know, it would be a lot better if, you know, Haku can use the sock waves. You know, obviously, this isn't an ideal thing he wanted to do, but it's better than having him next to, or, you know, next to him. So it's better to just get some distance between them. But that's what he says in his head. But he says out loud, they shut up. <laughs> he just tells them to shut up. I just thought it was kind of funny. After that, we get not a flashback panel, but I guess it's sort of like the narrator talking about the power imbalance with the Komabari. So I want to read it word by word so I don't mess anything up. He goes, specifically, the sorcerers using the, da the Dadasiki are disposable to the Hishaku. Even with the extra power, elite fighters can beat them, which is true. In other words, the not only, I mean, in other words, the not the only issue. The issue is they weaken the Komabari guards enough so that their elite fighters could finish them off. The Komobari side has two fighters with an, enchant with an enchanted blade level fighting prowess, which is Chihiro and Akami. Akami not her real name, it's the girl with the flame bone. I kind of forget how to say her real name, so I just call her Akami. Because to me, she kind of looks like the girl from Akami Got Kill. They also say that he's, he's Haku's side has more than, uh, more than that, but they're short-lived. On both sides, there are skilled fighters without enchanted blades, and on the Komobari side is Akama, I mean Akazi, the, the, guy that kind of, the guy that has the hair swooped to the side that kind of looked like Sanji. He was friends with Chihiro and Mr. Sabi uh, before they, he came to the Komobari and well, Mr. Sabi too. Wait, no, Mr. Siba. That's how you say it, Mr. Siba. I mean, say Mr. Sabi is Mr. Siba um, on our side. So really, the power imbalance is kind of split equally. The train right now is going towards the... Uh, I forgot his name. Let me see what his name was. Um, the train right now is going towards Mr. You... No, no, no. It's going... What's his name? I forgot his name, but it's the guy with the... Uh, it's going to the Buddha temple. And at the Buddha temple, it's the guy with the sunglasses that has the scars over his eyes, so he might be blind. That's where the train is going right now. So, the strategy is to go to where he is. So, by the time we get there, hopefully Haruki's powers are rejuvenated enough so he can get their spirit energy recognized inside of his um, storehouse so he can instantly get their blades. Because when he does that, the power imbalance will be even. It will break the deadlock. 
which would be good. I mean, that would be really good. And like I was saying when this arc first started, I was like, it's called the assassination arc. So either one to two of them are going to die. And there's four bearers that were specifically meeting up. Well, we already meet up with yo Yai. We're trying to meet the other guy with the sunglasses. So either the other two, either they're both going to die and the Hizhaku is going to get their swords. Well, they already got them, but being able to use them or just one of them is going to die. It depends on, well, I guess it depends on how important the characters are or how strong the swords are. So, you know, depending on who has like the strongest sword, they might die and then, you know, they can use that sword. I guess we'll just see it's like up in the air. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Also, I forgot to mention when I was talking about how, you know, we have sorcerers on both sides that can use, you know, that's really good at sorcery and they don't have enchanted blades. On our side, it was Mr. Siba and, and Akaza. But on their side, it shows Origami guy. So he's pretty strong then if they're showing him and the leader that he's Haku. So, when we come back into real time, Shihito and he, the origami guy land on the ground. And the origami guy's like, hey, I'm kind of glad we're kind of out in the open. So, we got plenty of space to work with. You don't have to be dragged down by those guys up there. So, you can go all out. I've been kind of waiting to fight you because Mr. They actually say his name, the leader. I forget if they said his name before. But the leader of this, he's Haku. His name is Yu Yura. Y-U-R-A. He goes, Yura is very interested in you. I kind of want to see why, too. And while Chihito is like looking at him, he brings a bunch of paper butterfly origami down to give a bunch of... Well, he, Chihito said they're not dead, but they fell out of the train and hit the ground. So they're, but, so they're about just nearly dead. Like a bunch of the random grunt people that didn't die in that like, like blade attack. They fell out of the train and hit, they hit the ground. So if they're not dead, they're pretty much dead. But all the little butterfly origami, they give all those random grunt people the little dashiki, like, um, not blade, but the little, like, chip that can give everybody the, like, you know, it'll kill you. It gives you the power of an enchanted blade if I rip your body apart. It gives them to them. And <laughs> they start to get up. I'm like, what? I guess all that power can not fully heal you, but I guess gives you the strength enough to stand up and do some stuff. The origami guy says that we call them our counter Enten special force, Chihiro. This means we can kill you. And then Chihiro says, I mean, Chihiro remembers what Yoya just said, that he got this. And he remembers about how his dad died, that he's Haku and everything about them. He goes, this deadlock is about to be broken. It's a really cool panel of him holding his sword up like this, ready to fight. I'm like, Ugh. okay, let's get it. So, I mean, the really main problem is the origami guy because who knows what else he can make that's number one number two i guess the other people with the dashiki it could be a problem too because they do have the power of an enchanted blade inside of them and shahido fought against one of them and it was actually kind of contending with him remember hakuri's brother before he got torn apart so it really just a waiting game to see how long it takes for them to get torn apart probably a bit faster than usual since their body is so jacked up right now but i guess they can do a little something and like I said, the origami guy, he should be pretty decent because especially, so it might be a problem to take him on. And the train is moving. So by the time Zahito takes this guy down, he's, it's going to take him a while to get to the temple. So, you know, unless it's like another train happening at the same time where he catches a car or Mr. Or Mr. Seba comes to teleport him, it's going to take him a while you know, to get back to them. And Akri and Yoyai, I mean, unless somebody else pops up on the train, they should be cooling. Unless they get to the temple and then, well, there's somebody there too waiting for them, which would be bad. Hopefully, Akri Powers will come back online because Yo Yai can fight. He's a skilled fighter, but he can only do so much against somebody with a regular blade. You know, <laughs> they're going to need those shockwaves in the storehouse to come back online because if there's somebody else when he's Haku that pops up on the train when they get to the Buddha temple, it's not going to be too good for them. <laughs> it's not going to be too good unless. Uh, we don't know where the Flame Bone Grill is or Kame. We don't know where she's at right now. She's probably at another temple defending them. But which temple? Who knows? Because they're, they're attacking all four. She could be at any of the three. So she could be at the Buddha one where we're going to help us. Or she could be at the other two. It's just a waiting game. And Mr. Siba, obviously he can't really... He would. He didn't want to like join because there's people that still kind of hate him there. He could still help out. So he could also pop up at the Buddha temple to help. Or he could pop out to help Chihiro get there, or he could pop up to help Chihiro fight. I mean, hey, anything could happen. 
We don't really know where he's at right now. Because who knows? And that's everything. Next chapter is chapter 50. That's a big milestone. You know, I can't wait for chapter 50. I might do a reaction to chapter 50. I've been doing reviews since like chapter 6 or 7. But I might bring my reactions back instead of just my reviews. It's up in the I don't know what I'll do just yet. But I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I got a week. You know, I got a whole week. So I guess I'll think about it. And uh, yeah, that's the chapter. Okay. So like. See and subscribe. I'll see you all later. Thank you all for watching. I think all of them have been wonderful human beings, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. All right.